Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Mario, your host with Testimonios Escondidos, Hidden Testimony. Today, we have an English episode for you. I am super excited for what God's going to do in this conversation. I'm really excited about our, our guest today. We're kind of, you know, our schedules, he's got a crazy schedule. He's busy with his church. I'm busy with my church, but, you know, we finally made it work and, you know, it's nine o'clock on a Sunday night. And I said, you know, he texted me. I said, hey, you ready to get this thing started? I'm like, hey, whenever you are ready, I'm ready to do this thing. So today I'm really excited. Um, today I'm going to be bringing a guest here that I will actually be learning who this person is real time. We have an, a, a small testimony together how we met at uh, at General Conference back in uh, back in July, and I just I knew this guy was was something special. Just instant connection there, and so we made a connection on Instagram and just kind of kept kept up. And then when I started the podcast, I said, you know, I need to reach out to that guy. I feel like he would be totally open to this, and really without hesitation, just said, hey, when where do you need me? I will be there. And so uh, I'm really excited today to have uh, my good friend in Christ, Mr. Alan Perez. He is with us here uh, in the studio, our second virtual guest for Testimonios Escondidos. Alan, my guy, how are you doing tonight? Praise the Lord, Brother Mario. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Man, I am. I'm blessed to be here, and I wouldn't have it, you know, uh, any other way. And I, I kind of wanted to get right into it of kind of how we met. So, you know, uh, it was, I don't know if it was the second or third night or even the day service. I mean, because when you walk into the stadium, bro, you know, it's just, you don't, you don't even, you just get lost in God's presence when you're, and you're at general conference. And I remember we just kind of, you know, I was in like section 218 or something like that. And you were just kind of sitting there. And you just kind of, I think you walked up to, to me and, and my brother Aaron, and, and you just started saying like, like how amazing everything is. And and I could tell you wanted to start a conversation, and I admired that instantly about you. So we started talking, and and you and you mentioned something. And, and again, if my memory doesn't serve me well, well, it's because I'm getting older. But I believe you said like, bro, like six months ago, you would have never told me that I would have walked into a uh, 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 an apostolic church, apostolic ministry, and, and you, there's been no way you would have convinced me that that I was going or I was going to do anything with Christ. And so, um, can you kind of? I, I think you kind of mentioned somewhere on the line atheist. Like, are all these things kind of sounded familiar, or, or am, am I just completely wrong? No, no. Um, so it, it was a funny, funny, funny story how this all happened. Um. So prior before all this, before I get into, you know, the reason how or how we talk, there, there's a there's a little bit of a background here just to prior for this moment, um, because that moment wasn't just uh, coincidental. It was very spiritually led. And, um, you know, like I told you in that moment, you know, six months ago, you would have told me I would have been there. or I would have been serving for Christ or if I would have even just been here at NYC, my first NYC conference ever, something that I've been wanting to do for three years. Ever since I got saved, I would have said, you're joking, or I would have said, there's no way. So I backslid those months ago, and I really fell into a heavy situation. I fell into the wilderness where I no longer knew my identity, or I no longer, what's it called? I never, I let go of my promise to be someone for Christ, to be a servant for Christ, to reach people for Christ. And I slowly lost my identity during that time, and I really didn't know where to go. I thought, you know, maybe this was a mistake. I was an atheist. I was a very, very big atheist. And I didn't say, you know, I was an atheist just to say I'm an atheist to get people mad or to get people upset. No, rather it was a very hateful, very prejudiced, very, um, you know, very violent way of, you know, atheism, where I would bash other people's beliefs, their, their gods, their system, their order, Islamic, you know, Muslims, I would, I would bash Orthodox Christians, Trinitarian Christians, anybody that valued or represented God, even Buddhism or any type of religion whatsoever, because it just didn't make sense to me. Um, I tried many of those uh, religions out, you know, and um, didn't work out whatsoever. But um, 
what's it called to that moment where I walked up to you I'm trying to recap this all quick I cried and I cried and I prayed and I repented for God to give me another opportunity to go to Christ and to remember who I am to remember the promise that I that I'm accounted to what I know not on what I feel I'm accounted to reach the lost I'm accounted to reach the the other atheists I'm accounted for you know, to be someone in Christ who I don't know who I am to be. I don't know what my servant, servant, um, servant heart was at. Then um, I came across a church, you know, everything in there was I prayed for unity, support, brotherhood, and a pastor that, you know, loved me and, and guided me, you know, and it, it was it was in that moment where I needed to be very specific on what I needed to grow in Christ. I believe that season was that. And I didn't have any money to go to an NYC conference. I was completely, I wasn't supposed to be there at all. That's, that's the, that's the, that's the thing, you know, you're not supposed to be there. Physically, you know, you weren't supposed to be in that moment. Financially, you weren't supposed to be in that moment. Spiritually, you were kind of repairing yourself. You shouldn't be there in that moment. And there's so many logical things that I can tell you in that season that I shouldn't have been there that night. My car was acting up. I was on uh, on the road to St. Louis, and uh, within two or three hours, something's acting up underneath my car. I'm like, oh, great. I, I can't even make it to NYC. My pastor gave me tickets to go to NYC to join the church, you know, the other youth and, you know, hyphen to, um, to the church. And during that moment, I was thinking this whole time, like, you know what? Like, you need to leave. You need to go back. You know, you need to go back to church, you know. You know, you're just good for nothing, you know, and all the, all these thoughts and all these ideas came into my head telling me that, you know, go back to atheism, go back to this, go back to that. And I stopped twice that night um, because I really thought that I was not going to make it. Mm-hmm. And there was a race there on the clock. There was a timer. There was a there was an alertfulness that night before I met you. That if I wanted to see the heavenly kingdom, if I want to see God work in my life, if I really want to be persuaded, if I am willing to be persuaded, or if I'm willing to make a difference within my spiritual life and my accountability to Christ and what he saved me, then I need to do it. I need to go. I need to push. I need to believe. And I need to pray. And I made it that night. And it was the second night that I met you. And ever since I got baptized... And save with the Holy Ghost. And someone told me there was NAYC. I've always wanted to go. Six months ago, before I met you, if someone would have told me in that wilderness that you would have came back to Christ stronger, you would have been more stronger than you ever been. You've been more spiritually guided than you ever been. You would have been more in love with serving, servant, you know, the servant, um, the servant heart, and just be more of a person for Christ, to know who you are in Christ, to actually believe you can be someone in the kingdom or to be someone for another person, to save someone. And, you know, that was that. And, you know, that's when I met you because if I, if I was right and I, you know, in, in the Holy Ghost, you know, and everyone there's around me, I need to take the most of it. I need to make the most of it. I need to show that I am willing to do what I need to do. And just saying hi, just saying hi to other brothers. You know, this is the greatest momentum in my life. I've never met other, I've never been into conferences where there was a lot of brothers in Christ or a lot of sisters in Christ, a lot of people in Christ that praise God, the living God. And throughout my whole years in atheism and and when I was saved, that's all I want now, to be surrounded in one spirit and one accord and one truth. Mm. Because when you're in an environment like that and you never knew who God was and you never know people that believe in God and actually, you know, want to see you do better in God. And for you to walk into an environment like that, you don't want to let go. You mm-hmm. don't. How can I how can I be friends with, you know, other people in the world, secular people, drugs, alcoholics, you know, um, gang members that are affiliated and all these other, you know, evil people. You know, I used to hang out with people who wanted to be in satanic bands. I used to be, I used to want to be a, a lead singer in a satanic band. I used to want to hang out with, you know, witches and all, all these other people. So when, when I walked in that room in NAYC, 
I just felt like this is where I need to be. This is where I need to be. People surrounded with people with the right doctrine, with the right heart, and that believe in God. And I, it felt like heavenly kingdom, the power, the authority, the spirit, and everyone in the same accord and the same love. And, you know, when I saw you, I was like, you know what, God, like, you got me here with a purpose and with a mind. And you didn't just leave me back there. You provided a way. And I'm going to make the most of it. And I'm going to take this opportunity, not knowing who these other brothers are, but I know them in the spirit. So I'm going to just say hi to them. Wow. And that's how it all started, you know, talking to you. And, you know, it wasn't, I'm blessed and honored to have met you. You know, I'm blessed to have seen your work, you know, through Instagram, seeing your passion for Christ, seeing what you're doing, you know, showing other, you know, fellow other Christians on why, you know, you're following the apostolic faith. Mm-hmm. And it's not just religion. It, it's it's a it's faith. It's it's belief. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I loved it, and I I don't regret it. And I'm thankful to God that I met you. Well, praise God. It's <laughs> uh, I obviously didn't know that I played any role whatsoever. And I want my audience to know that that we really met for a very brief period of time, and just connect on Instagram. And and now I just invited you here. To be, a, to be a guest on the podcast, and obviously I'm, I'm honored to, to, to hear that. And there's so much to unpack there. <laughs> and it's just like, bro, we're cut from the same cloth. Like, you said things, that's me. That is me. Bro, I was in a metal band back in back in 2016. Like, you would have never... Oh, wow. 2015, 2016, <laughs> called Tides of Treason. And you if you would see me there, man, I had, like, long hair... Or yeah. tank tops and everything. I mean, we were in a screamo band, um, and just I was, I was, I was, I was desperate to use my musical talents to be anything uh, but be used for Christ. And so I, I found my comfort in that. And me, and my brother, you know, made our own band, and we did that for about a year. And so you're telling me you were in some, you were in that. <laughs> and and I know the crowds that come with that with that environment. Mm-hmm. It is. Now that I have a obviously a deeper understanding, I know how demonic that is, and 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 how much um, how much filth I got myself into, unfortunately. But praise God that both of us got got out of that. Praise Amen. God that we're both bilingual and good looking. My goodness, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Actually, Amen, I, I don't even know, how, brother. How how old are you? I don't even know your age. Honestly, brother, I'm 23. I'm 23. Beautiful. A ripe young 23 Alan Perez is about to set this world on fire for Christ. I love that. Well, there's a couple things there that I definitely want to unpack that you said, and, and thank you again for, for sharing that. It's amazing that when when you're about to go have your breakthrough, how the devil will put obstacles, how he will try to discourage you, how he will put your own fleshly desires back in front of your eyes, which you thought you already defeated. He will put them right yes. back in there and mm-hmm. just say, hey, don't you know what the other side tasted like? You know, don't you remember you didn't have to do all these commitments, bro? There's no reason why you need to go there. You know what your wallet looks like. You know what this car drives like. You know, you you know those people really don't care about you. And they and and I just imagine the devil was trying to to feed into you, you know, during that moment saying, "Hey, don't. Just whatever you do, just don't go there." And then the fact that you persevered and went through, I find that so admirable because Man, I, I tell you this. Here's a testimony I've got. So I'm working with these with these two couples right now. I'm not going to mm-hmm. say their names, of course. And you know, one of the couples, I, I met them at the same time, gave them Bible studies at the exact same timeline. One the one couple responding unbelievably well to the gospel, have been baptized in Jesus' name. The other two have also been baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God for that. But mm-hmm. not responding at all. You know, mm. and, and you just kind of ask that question, do you really want that change in your life? And I mm. think that has to be, I I was speaking to a pastor and he told me this, and, and maybe this means something to you. You know, obviously us as apostolics, we, we are so passionate about the verse uh, Acts 2.38. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But we fail to forget what happened in verse 37. Mm. And in verse 37, 
after Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, preached to these men, it said they were pierced in their heart. And then they yes. said, what shall we do? Rather than being told what to do, they realized we messed up. We And so what someone told me, and I believe what this is what's happened, happened in you and your journey, is you finally had that encounter with God. Like you had the true encounter. Like, yes, you were saved. You were baptized. You were filled with the Holy Ghost. Years passed. But, yes. but, but you get off track. And... One thing we have to understand, and one thing I went through myself, because I had my moment that you're talking about in August of 2015, when I tried everything in the world and I realized nothing satisfies but God. So I had my encounter with Christ. I had my moment where I truly understand that this life is not mine. It solely belongs to Him. And I finally surrendered myself. Instead of them telling me what to do, I said, what should I do? Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's just that's just a mind, it's just a it's just a switch in your mind, and you're like, oh my. Like now I really understand. Like I'm not going to church out of routine. I'm not going to church because it's a good habit. I'm not going yeah. to church because it's a nice social club or to have status or clout. Mm-hmm. I'm going there mm-hmm. because I want to experience God's presence in its entirety, in one accord with all yeah. fellow believers, because as any good father would want their children to be around them at the kitchen table, be around them in the living room, be around them at night in their home— the exact same thing our Heavenly Father would want His children to do, be in one accord, fellowshipping, playing with one another, encouraging, edifying. Cha- I mean, does all this like, is all this like ring a bell of your moment that you had, brother? I mean, well, brother, everything that you're saying is exactly what was put in play with myself. There comes to a moment where if you really want to see the glory you have to endure it. And it was very ironic because that's what exactly happened at NAYC. Everything that I was going through was being preached at that night. And yes, like you said, how much more do you want it? Are you going to go to a point where like in every wilderness in every wilderness is just like math and it's just like algebra. It's just like any subject. If you're looking at it, like, you know, without like, you know, the intent of maybe someone's over spiritualizing or anything like that. But if you go to school and you sit down, you're reading an algebraic equation or you're reading a problem that needs an exact formula, an exact way to answer it. Now, we as believers, when we hear people going through something, we we see what they do. And and the formula is already given to us. It's fast, it's pray, and it's seeking God, and it's obeying God. It's it's doing everything that's pleasing God without the essential of us using feelings. We're, we're, We're removing feelings and we're using our institution, our mind. Where we need to actually understand if I want to see this, if I want to go through this, and if I want change, if I want change, what must I do? What must I, what what formula do I use? You know, do I fast? Do I pray? Do I do this? Do I do that? You know, and it's exactly like that what you're saying, brother. And yes, that's exactly what happened. You know, it's, it's something that I had to continually reach out my hand, no matter what I'm seeing, because, you know, we're walking by faith not by sight. Man, that is, I, we walk by faith and not by sight. And man, what, what do I say to that? What do I say to that? I, I, I believe truly wholeheartedly. And, and I actually, I kind of want to wrap, I want to wrap this back, back to you here. Mm-hmm. And another thing that you were, you were talking about, and, and I, I don't want to overlook this, bro. To be atheist is something I personally have never even touched, honestly. Like, I've always grown up in a Christian environment. And even when I was out in the world, I never stopped believing in God. I just wasn't serving Him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was serving my own passions, my own desires. But to enter the realm of atheism is something I really don't know much about. And so... Bro, that's that. I I read a book by by a guy named Robert Turek, and it says he says it, it, it's a guy that I, I I follow his YouTube channel called Cross Examined, and he 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 goes to all these colleges, he debates these, he he debates. Or well, he does a presentation on his book. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist because I think you have to have a lot of faith to believe there is no God. 
like zero God whatsoever, like yes. everything just came from nothing, and we're all from <laughs> pre-mortal soup a billion years ago, and all of a sudden, like we have all these complex systems in our in our in our in our mind and our bodies, and this apparently all of it just came from a cataclysmic uh, Big Bang theory, which none of it makes sense, right? And so, <laughs> right now, now looking at so it, it now, so yeah. you said something, and, and I kind of mm-hmm. want to go a little bit deeper in what you meant by that. When you said, I wasn't just an any atheist, I was a hateful atheist. Correct. Go, what, what exactly did, did you mean that you were a... a again, I, I never touched atheism. I always right, believed right. there was a higher power at some point in my life. Praise God that I had you know a, Christ, a Christian family influence around me. But what, what does that mean to kind of be a, a hateful atheist? So... Um, given a little bit more background to this, you know, I grew up as a Trinitarian with my mother guiding us and, you know, taking us to church. I fell in love with Christ at a very early age. I never attended Bible school. I never attended Bible classes, Sunday schools. I'm sorry. I would always be in the front of the pews, um, listening to the pastor at an early age. They would always tell me, you know, take your son, you know, to the Bible class, uh, classes, you know, Sunday school. And I kept telling them, no, you know, they're giving me they're teaching me something that, you know, is soft. I need to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, to give a little bit more context, I grew up in a very, um, you know, bad environment, bad household. Uh, I was born in New Jersey. And then um, we moved here to Chicago, growing up with poverty, growing up with domestic uh, violence, growing up with alcoholism, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, being um, uh, evicted, throughout many, many, many numerous times, houses, and even going to state to state. Mm-hmm. Um, I, ironically, Tennessee was one of them. <laughs> but um, what's it called? Um, hey, you're always welcome to Tennessee. This, this place, <laughs> is, gonna, wide this place is wide open. This place is wide open. I'm going to send you a message saying I'm going to stop by. <laughs> but um, what's it called? Um, so my hunger for answers and my hunger for the way of life, the reason why we live and the reason why we stem off of certain things, or what's the whole point of a... What's the whole point of fighting for something came out at a very, very early age of mine, around eight or nine years old. Um, During this time, I've witnessed so many times of things that shouldn't have happened in my life. Whenever it was deaths in the family, whenever it was abuse or alcohol or or just sadness and depression and anger, all, all, all negativity things, you know, all negative things. And, you know, you're going to church and you're really praying or, or you're, you know, trusting a, a parent at this age, you know to guide you and, and to tell you that, you know, go to the altar and Jesus will answer you or God will, he, you know, he'll, he'll do something. And then seeing no change has brought me sadness in my prayer life, has brought me sadness. And I didn't know this at that time. Now that I'm revisiting those times and now that I'm with the Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost, I can actually now really understand why I need to go through those things. But before I get into that, um, so... With us moving, uh, we've lost communication. We lost, you know, uh, ties with the church that we were going. We started, you know, backsliding. We started, you know, revolting in the world and all this. And my hunger still continued. Uh, when every you, church I when you to, say when you say we, who who is that? As far as in, um, I thought you said, sorry. you said we were backsliding. Oh, as family. I'm sorry, as family. As a family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. I'm I'm trying to remember every single thing here. Apologies. Um. So we, as in my family, um, we've attended multiple different churches and it just never, it was the same thing. I would always try to get baptized, ironically. So as, as a little boy, I was going, I was, I think I went to seven different churches and I got baptized every single time because I had this intent of knowing there has to be something true. Hmm. But during those times, and it was really in high school, I mean, middle school. Where, where my love for God started going to hatred and bitterness. And, and here's the thing about, you know, about that. Nobody really speaks a lot about that. You know, how quickly our prayer life can dwindle to hate and to anger and to jealousy and to envy. Hmm. If we don't treat it right at the right time. When I was little, not having no more instruction and just being guided by life, my own self-pleasures, my own way of life my own way of order it was chaotic obviously god was in the center of it i didn't know what i was doing i was just a teenager i was just doing whatever i needed to do Mm -hmm. i was very um 
depressing. I was very depressed. I was very suicidal. I was very um negative, and and my anger for for life is just. Everything that I did was actually the opposite of life. It was the self destruction and death. Very ironically, um, so during during these middle school years is where I started having hatred, just anger towards God, thinking that I can actually fight against Him if you really believe that. And there's a lot of atheists, or even if I could really say satanics, that really believe they can have this power to actually take down God. Now, the difference between Satanism and atheism. I mean, um, they're kind of in one branch, technically, one side, because they all, you know, don't listen, to, don't want to listen to God. You know, you can mm -hmm. put them in, in the same category. But atheists don't believe in God or in anything, what's it called, devil or good or, you know, bad and good. Any higher power, no moral, right. moral mm -hmm. standard. Moral standard comes from your own interpretation. Correct. So, and, and there's two types of atheists. There's atheists that don't believe in anything. And there's atheists that believe in a higher power, but don't know what it is or don't really want to listen or don't want to obey others. Now, I wasn't that second branch of atheism. I went back to the first one that I don't believe in anything. Mm -hmm. And during this type of transition in middle school, I started studying different types of religions, Buddhism, you know, it, m Muslim. And, and uh, you know, I was really close to being that. I was really close to being that. But it just didn't really fully align with my views or my perspective in life. So I didn't really fall into it. Mm -hmm. Then I tried um, Lutheran Orthodox Christians. I think that's what it's called. I, it didn't divert much of Trinitarianism. So I was just like, Bleh. so then Catholicism. And when I walked in the Catholic Church, I was just like, there's literally no point of me like believing this. Like this is too... In my own words, this is completely bizarre how there's idols in here and we're wow. supposed to work. This is no different than Greek mythology. That's my head. Uh -huh. So I'm in the pursuit of these different subjects, these different ways of life, this different way of order. And, you know, Norse and all these all these different ways of God, because if there is a God, why is there multiple gods? That's my, that's what my thinking was. If there's a God, why is there multiple gods? They wouldn't make no sense. How can Poseidon rule the waters and not rule the sky? It, it made no sense to me. You know, and, and I started digging into this and I and I eventually went to atheism, full on atheism, where I was just like, you know what? I can't believe in anything. I can't believe in Christian logic. I can't believe in Muslim logic, because if I believe in these certain things, then what is it do I really believe? What is it that's really out there? And I became very hateful to anyone that proclaimed they believe in God or they believe in a God. I met, I met a lot of Catholics um, in high school. And, and high school was the very epistle of my character. It was the very um, beginning, the peak, I would say, of who hate, how hateful I was and how vengeful I was to anyone who believed in God. If you were to see me throughout my years, you would see that high school was the biggest, biggest amount of hatred in my character. Completely the opposite of who I was. I would laugh, I would like make fun of, I would be little and I would even say slurs and I would even say like, not slurs, I would say, I'm sorry. I would say um, like cuss, cussing words. I would say um, slang and I, I, would, I would make fun and ridicule who God was whenever these people came up to me. Catholicism, they, they tell me they believe in God and I say, okay, what do you believe in? And I start laughing at them. I start, I start making fun of them. And to the point where many of them actually fell out of their belief. They now are believing in paganism. Now they believe in, um, what's it called? Um, the pronouns. Now they believe in, what's it called? Um, these false, like, idols. And, you know, I start laughing at this. I'm saying, see, you know, you're no, you're no believer. You don't believe in God, you know? And, and I, I make fun of it. And the next group will come whenever, you know, if it was, you know, Muslims or Luciferian or Akhazniks or, you know, different type of Trinitarians. And it's the same thing over and over again. No one would tell me that I was able to be saved. No one told me that I was able to see Christ. No, no one had that relationship with God. They gave me their doctrine, but it was false doctrine. It just didn't make sense to me. And uh, the these certain other Christians, they also fell out. They became, um, you know, atheists, or they became Satanists, or they became um, any wicked thing that you could think of, and. You know, I started laughing and I started walking in my life, you know, and, and senior year was very, very odd for me. 
senior year was the beginning of a transition in me. Um, I started getting my life together. I started praying again. Ironically, I started praying again. Being an atheist. Started, yeah, being again. an atheist. I started praying. And, and you know what's the craziest thing, Brother Mario? What I was praying for actually happened. One of these examples was when I was in orchestra playing the violin and I wanted to drop out. And, you know, I was going through a breakup or whatever. And I was just saying, like, you know, God, I really need to get through this. I just want to play. And the next day I woke up. I read the notes and I started playing. The next day, boom, something happened. Some, everybody in class was shocked, even, the, even the, the teacher. He was like, oh, my gosh, Alan, you did it. And I was like, I don't know how I did it. And, and something started more changing in me. My attitude started developing. My, my, my brain started understanding. And... At this time, I was still fighting it. Uh, I wasn't supposed to graduate school. I graduated school with A's and B's for the first time in my life. Like I said, I did nothing to try to improve my life, ironically, yeah. as it is. And, and for the first time, I realized that if I actually put the effort in, my life could change. Okay, move on. After high school, I started living my reckless life again. I started drinking. I started doing, you know, driving, whatever. And, and nothing happened. You know, I was still the same old guy. At work, I meet this guy that's Christian. And, you know, I you know, I go back there and I start laughing. I'm like, oh, you believe in Christ? He's like, yeah, man. And, you know, he started. He's like, I'll be praying for you. I'm like, okay, you know, you do that and I'll go have fun. And during that time, you know, my mind started transitioning different. My mind started thinking, what if there is a God? What if Jesus, you know, what if I was raised right? What if, like. Jesus is real. What if God is real? And, you know, I start thinking more. I'm like, well, if I want to do this, I want to do this right. I can't fall into something and then bail on it. Or I can't fall into something and think something else. I have to be fully believe believing in that. So during this time, my oldest sister and my oldest sibling, um, she was going through a very difficult time. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen her life. You know, I've always been negative towards her. Everything that she tried doing, I always told her she can't do it, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, get this along. <laughs> but um, so she cries um, one day because she lost her job. She lost her car. She lost basically motive or anything to change. Mind you, she was the only one who believed in God at this moment and prayed. She was in the room, ironically, this room. And she was sitting down, kneeling, crying towards God, praying for God, for, for a godly husband. And um, she's crying. It's, it's like a long time. I don't, I can't put a time on it. I just know it was very long. And I walk up to her room and I knock on the door. Well, it was, the door wasn't even closed. It was actually open. And I said, Vanessa, like, Stop praying like no one's listening to you. I love you so much that no one is listening. She gets up, smacks the door in my face, and continues to pray. And the next day, I would have met who would have been the person who won my soul to Christ. A believer, an apostolic believer. Wow. That man would be my brother-in-law. That man would be the husband that she prayed for. That man would be the husband that she gave, that he gave her a baby. My niece, my beautiful niece. During that time, I was astounded. I was shocked. Seeing how fast she had a boyfriend at the time, seeing how fast, like, it, I, I was startled. And, you know, Vanessa said, yeah, he believes in God. And I'm like, you're smiling, you know. This is where the change was activating. I start smiling at her. I mean, I start smiling at him. I said, oh, you're a Christian. That's cool, man. You know, you know, go love God, you know, whatever. You know, I respect that. And he's like, what do you mean? You, you believe? I'm like, oh, no, not really. No, I'm, I'm just, you know, living life, whatever. At this time, I'm still playing atheist. I'm still, you know, in denial. So I, I, he starts talking to me about Jesus. He starts telling me about the blood and he starts talking to me about God. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, here's another guy. You know, like, dude, I don't care. You know, I don't care. Like, leave me alone. 
but you know out of politeness i started talking to him and and you know i started asking him questions you know and th these questions mind you were the same questions i've asked every single individual that i've had path on he starts answering these questions left and right using scripture now i'm starting to freak out I'm starting to freak out here. And I'm actually freaking out. Like, I'm not I'm not saying that just to say it. I was actually freaked out. I was like, oh, sh shoot. Like, oh, well, I didn't say, oh, shoot at that time, right? But that's what I said. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, so something is happening here. And I, I got to leave. That's, that's what literally I said to myself. I got to leave. Hmm. So during this time, I was going to, I was in a relationship with an atheist. And I was going to propose. Her dad was an atheist, too. So we got along very well. And during this time, you know, I'm planning to propose. I'm planning to, you know, tie tie the knot, whatever. And this man, my brother-in-law, would just keep talking to me about Christ. I mean, messaging me about scripture, messaging me about God, sending me videos of, of preachers. And I'm just like, leave me alone, man. And I start clicking on them. I start reading them. And something about me, I don't know what it was during those nights that something in me started changing. Something in me started being scared. Hmm. little by little, I start being scared. I couldn't go to sleep at some nights. I start calling my, my ex, my, my atheist girlfriend. I'm like, like, I think we got to go to church. She said, what? What do you mean we got to go to church? I mean, I said, I, I, we need to go to church. We sat there. I'm hearing this man who preached a pastor. And I love that pastor. Um, and she keeps talking to me and I can't hear him. I can't hear the pastor preaching, you know. She's telling me that we should be going to the bar. We should be going to this. We should be doing that. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I, I couldn't listen to it. Hmm. And then, you know, some nights happen again. My brother's still ministering to me. He's still doing this. I'm like, like, I told him in a message, like, I don't think you understand. Like, you know, I said this to him in person. And when he was at the house, I think days before the wedding, I sat down there and I told him, like, you don't understand. You don't. You don't understand how much bad things I did to people who believe in God. You don't know what I did. I cannot be saved. I am going to die in hell. That's what I told him. I am going to burn in hell. I will not be saved. Wow. So stop this. Stop it. Like, I can't listen to this because now I'm scared. Now I'm actually, like, fearful. Now I'm actually, like, I can't listen to this anymore because I feel like, I am not going to get saved. I feel like when judgment comes, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't the, the fearful death of dying because, you know, I was suicidal at, at that time, you know, still at that time. But it was it was the eternal death that I was scared of. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and he's like, you don't understand. I'm like, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand why he cuts me off and he says, you don't understand the blood that was shed for you. And I looked at him like, let's go. I was speechless. I was speechless and I just looked at him and I wanted to cry. And, you know, I just grabbed my keys and I, I, I left the house. And uh, he took me to a Bible study the next, the next two days. And I was scared. I was shaking. I was, I was in my head just saying that, no, you know, the negativity, the devil, you know, the enemy. I was sitting there listening to all these testimonies. I'm just like, you guys don't understand. Like, I'm going to die. Like, I am going to die. Yeah. Like, like I am going to die and there's no one that can do nothing about it. Like, in my head, I already knew that I was going to die. That same night driving back, um, I was supposed to be in a car accident. The lights were flashing. The car was about to hit me. And I literally let go of the wheel and I literally said, God, forgive me. I'm going to die. Like, I am going to die. Like, I'm sorry. And I let go of the wheel and I left my hands. I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm accepting it. I'm accepting it. Like I, I'm accepting that you are God and I'm accepting that I have sinned, that I have done the most horrible acts and I cannot be saved. I, I confess. I admit. And I, when I did that and I closed my eyes, I expected the car to smack me and just rolled over and, I'm, and it's done. It's finished. And I wasn't going to be mad or frustrated about it. I, I came to acceptance on that. But I saw like, a hand move and jerk the wheel just a little bit and the car just passed me. And I'm here thinking, okay, I must have saw something. Maybe it was the light that he had. Maybe it's this and maybe it's that. And when I said, when, maybe it was God. And that's when I started crying. 
I grabbed my phone at that time. I called the atheist woman that I was with and she starts calling me, you're crazy, you're crazy, this and this and that. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna call my brother-in-law. And back before I got called my brother-in-law, I parked my car and I see him in the living room and I start crying. I said, I gotta get saved. I gotta, I gotta get saved. I gotta, God is real. That's all I said. And I was crying my eyes out. Praise God. And I was crying my eyes out and I couldn't deny it anymore. So I believe it was December 20th of 2020. I went up to the altar. I walked to the altar and I was crying. I was in pieces and I'm going to this altar and I'm just trying to stand. I'm just trying to stand and say, God, forgive me. God, you know, it didn't happen that way. I walked towards the front and before I could even just keep standing, my knees fell down. It felt like this gravity just pushed me down. And it said, I am the one. I am the real one. I am the one that judges you. I am the one that accepts you. I am the one that forgives you. I am the one. Wow. And all I kept saying was, sorry for hurting you. Sorry for hurting the other. Sorry for persecuting you. Sorry for hurting like hurting the people of you hurting you that's why i said I, I i'm sorry i hurted you i'm sorry i i'm sorry i just didn't believe in you i'm sorry and i just felt like there was a beginning there a beginning of life that i never had when i was birthed out the womb and when I looked up at the screen where I was going to get baptized, it was Acts 2.38. And I never was able to switch my mind after that. I never was able to say I was an atheist. I never was able to say I'm still an atheist. I was never able to say I, I don't believe in God. I was never able to say those things out again in my mouth. Even, even the hard times, even the in and out of seasons, even the backsliding. I kept thinking, maybe I should go back to that, but it never happened. I couldn't reject that. I couldn't reject that night. I couldn't reject that moment. I couldn't reject when I started fighting for my life and I started loving it. I couldn't stop knowing that I was running. And um, ever since that night, yes, it's been difficult. It has been difficult. But just with anything new in a person's life, it, it comes through, you know, discipline. It comes through consistency. It comes through trying to maintain it and keep it and, you know, mm -hmm. grow with it. So during those years, during the last three years, no, I was not the perfect or I was not the, this, this man that I am. I was not that man. Yeah. But it was because of those seasons and it was because of those moments where I had to really stretch my hand out and believe and just pull it and be captivated in it mm -hmm. that i am who i am now now i am speaking bolder for the grace of god now now i am persuaded that there is something out there for me to do that that i can reach souls that i can reach people and that i can speak to atheist people that i can get them here that i'm, I'm not just a i'm not just a rag but i'm a tool i'm a vessel and you know the people people that i met during that time people who were atheists people who were satanic they, they they didn't hang out with me anymore they didn't want to talk to me anymore and um they really just um changed their perspectives on me and you know it was it was weird it was difficult i don't understand why people left me when i was finding out who i was but finding your identity in christ is that, when everyone chose to leave you yes correct it was the the, the atheist woman she left me and you know i thought that was god ordained believe it or not at that moment <laughs> but i realized you know someone told me they're like how can god give you someone that doesn't believe in god and then that's when boop, i was like yup and uh it was during those times where i started choosing god more people started leaving and people started mm -hmm. you know doubting me and people started leaving you know and it is what it is, you know, famously said, you know, in the modern day now, it is what it is. But have, have I hurt people along this way? Yes. Have I done things that I shouldn't have? Of course. But the people who know me, 
and the people who are side with me and the people who have seen me grow. It's never my intent to harm, but to instruct, to heal, to help. And um, I confess that, you know, because during this road from atheism to believing, it's not easy. And to those who have never have felt atheism or who, to those who have never have had this anger towards God or to those people who have never experienced it or even felt that, it's not an easy transition at all. We're talking about years of even maybe decades, generations of, of hatred, bitterness, of patterns, of, of, of just negativity. And yes, God can change everything in a, in a blink of a moment. He can. But are we willing? Are we willing to endure that? Are we willing to put ourselves in that position? Mm -hmm. You know, are we willing to put that position every single day to be refreshed every single day, to be forgiven, to be healed, to be loved, and et cetera, to others, to love, to heal, and to forgive? Are we willing to do that just as what he does with us? And, you know, as, as I, um, as I, you know, share my testimony to, to, to the world, it, it's not, it's not something to underlook at. There might be someone right there next to you that's an atheist or even a Satanist, but that doesn't mean that's who they are. There's hurt there. There's someone who, who hasn't experienced God and, and there's someone there who just is hateful, who hasn't felt love, who has been, been dirtied and done wrong by so many. And they don't know how to trust. They don't know how to love. They don't know how to live. They don't know how to live. I've seen these people Satan as you know, like you said, you know, you know, the crowd that comes with it with metal bands and all this stuff. You see people who are on drugs, you see people who are alcohol, you know, you are seeing people who are who are trying to survive the world that they're in, but they don't know who Christ is. And and whenever someone preaches the gospel to them, there's this defensive angertism attitude that they have. But I promise, you know, to those who are listening, if you just reach out your hand, just a smile, just a hello. You never know if that person will be ever be saved. And if they ever be saved, you don't know how many generations after that. It's about meeting where we're at. The man who met me where I was at was not, I was not the person to be fully respectful. I was not the person to be fully persuaded. I was not the person to, I'm not, I was not the person to sit down and talk and smile at you. I was the person that you tried to avoid to talk to, or you didn't want to look at. Yeah. But, you know, I share this because, you know, if we want to do more for the kingdom, if we want to reach souls, if we want to, if we want to actually just make more of an impact, it's meeting people where that if they believe or they don't believe. I meet um different religious people. I met a Jehovah's Witness. I've met you know, and and he's a he has act. I don't know what type of order they have, but I know he's a very. I think he's a pastor. Yeah. Um. He, we don't we don't talk a lot. We talk about biblical. We talk about scripture at work, and you know. He says, "Man, there's something about you. There's different, man. Like you, yeah. If I if I show you this, you catch on really quick. You're you're like it's, and you know, I smile and you, you know, know what that really, is. You know what that is. That's the spirit of God, working through you, bro. L l let me that you unpack so much, bro. Like that <laughs> is that is such an incredible testimony, and I am so thankful. I feel like I'm skipping a lot." <laughs> no, I'm so thank dude. I'm 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 sitting here just like, bro, this is this is me. <laughs> like I'm seeing a mirror because I know a lot of things that you felt during your time of of uh through atheism was me just having a hate towards the things of God, not being fully satisfied with the things of God. Getting to the point where I said, I am uh, I am now unforgivable. I've done too much. And you know, one thing you said was I was doing all these self-destructive behaviors. That's what sin is. Remember, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So the price of every sin that you do is going to lead you to death. There's nothing else to it. There, there is no alternative. There's no short-term pleasure. You, you are just doing self-destructive behavior. You're either growing in Christ or you're dying, uh, dying to the world. There is only two paths you can take. That's and well and bro i'm just thankful that that there was someone in your life who met you at the time that you needed to do it and i'm thankful for your sister bro like i bet yes. 
if she was the only one praying in that household, your name was mentioned it multiple was. times. It was. Multiple it times. Was. I would be shocked if it wasn't. And the fact that the night that you discouraged her to stop praying because no one's listening the very next day, I just imagine, what I imagine here right now is the scenario when Paul is on the road to Damascus and he <laughs> encounters Christ and he says, don't yeah. you think it's hard to hit against the pricks? Right, I literally feel like that was your moment where God was like, bro, you've been fighting against me all these years. You've been trying to find it all these years. Bro, I'm here to tell you, like, I am real. I am that I am. I'm here to show you my power and let it be glorified in your life. So stop fighting. And the moment you had at that altar in December of 2020... That was my August 2015 moment, bro. I'm telling you. I was to the point where I had been in the world. I, I was I was I went from leading the church in music to leading leading a mosh pit. I mean, I was that yeah. guy within <laughs> <Yeah>. within, <laughs> within within a one year period. And then the next year, before we get to August 2015, I had gotten to a moment where I had, you know, did some shameful things the night bef- a month before, and then I'm getting a text, and I and 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 someone and someone that I don't even know their name says, "Hey, I just want to let you know that you're going to be a father." Mm-hmm. And I don't even remember the the event that took place, and I don't need to say any more. But you understand, and I remember just that's when I realized this is not for me, and I remember just. I remember praying to God. I was like, "Please let this be a lie." I mean, of, of, I mean, I was again. My mind was so warped at that point. I was like, "Let abortion be a thing. Let abortion." And 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 of course, I would never support that. Now, come to find out, she was lying. Praise God. But at that point, mm-hmm. that's where I I I, I committed myself mm-hmm. to celibacy again. I said, "Lord, I will never, um, I will never, um, you know, do anything with another woman that's not my wife," and. It's amazing how how God responds because sometimes He needs to He He needs to just kind of how do I say this? Sometimes you can catch God when you're in a season of rebellion, and He catches oh, yeah. your attention. Sometimes you catch God where or He catches you when you're in in, uh, in a season of of growth and your season of searching for Him. But whatever needs to happen, I pray that whatever is necessary, let it be done. And so for me, it was that moment. And in August of 2015, I called my pastor, who had called me for 16 months straight, once a month, just to ask me if I would come back to church. And so that same church I was leading left, came back, and that's the same church I'm at now. Praise God. So I'm thankful for a man of God who didn't give up on me. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that he's, he's, he's not afraid to challenge me. He's helped me grow. And, and that August 2015, and that's, that's what I was going back to, all to the very beginning that I said. <laughs> it's that encounter with God, yes. with your true encounter with God, where you said, Lord, mm-hmm. I am a mess, and I know I'm a sinner, and I realize that I cannot navigate this life without you. So I need you to show yourself, and that's when he shows himself. When Amen. we get to the point where we're done with this Amen. life, right? Amen. Where we're done with this life, and then he says, okay, now I can manifest myself in you. Now you are the right type of ground that's been tilled up and cultivated. Now I can start putting seed in there, and we can start we can start building new fruit. Because just like you said, you said, you know, years and years the parable of the of the sower, right? What you sow, you shall harvest. You sowed hate for years and years and years and years and years. So you harvest it. Hate, 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 hate. But the thing with God, his timeline's a lot quicker. Oh yes. Unlike the world, which will drag out, if you if you commit to God, boom, you are you are on the fast track. Bro, let me put a pause right here. Let me put a pause right here. Don't go. I've got a, yep. I've got a lock on my computer at ten o'clock where all my programs shut down. 
something me and my wife do just to get off early. <laughs> okay. Let me let me get in here just to unlock this, and then we're gonna pick right back up. Maybe. I'll, I'll edit all that out. Don't worry. <laughs> you're all good. You're all good. Yeah. I, if I'm rambling on, just let me know, man. No. I'm skipping a lot, but no, bro. Just, I want to get to the, you know. This has been, this has been an unbelievable, fruitful conversation. And yeah, again, I, I invited you to this platform so you could share that testimony. I was waiting. I was waiting for it to come <laughs> out and then it just poured out, bro. It just poured out and I'm, I'm so honored to have have listened to that because that just man that just reminds me of so many things that have passed through my life, you know. Uh, I, we have lived very similar lives. I, I, I assure that. you that. <laughs> I assure you that you and I have lived very similar lives, and for God to allow us to connect was no coincidence, right? Yeah. It's it's a yeah. reminder of hey. Yeah, I, I feel like again. I'm 33. You're 23. I'm looking at myself again. You're so much farther. <laughs> you're so much farther than I. I was at 23, and I know God's going to use you, in, in and in a mighty and powerful way, as long as you keep sharing that testimony. You have now experienced so much that that you can't forget your experiences, right? And I don't think right, God. I don't right. think I don't think God wants you to forget that. He just wants you to use it to warn the next person, to warn the next generation. Like, hey, bro, I, I've seen this path. I've 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 played this movie. Hey, let me tell you what the results are going to be. And I'm just warning you, don't go down that path. I recently just there's a there's a sister in my church who. I could see was kind of experimenting with the world, you know, it's kind of that 18, 19 year old, you right. know, j played good in high school, but after high school, got a little bit of freedom, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I said, Hey sister, I, I'm telling you, like I put, I, I put this example and it wasn't well received when I first told it, but I did it anyways, <laughs> because I'm not sure if you remember on the second day, James Wilson preached that sermon, It's Okay to Hate Away. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, that was good. So was very, very I good. remember me and my wife took away from that, hey, you're going to tell some people things, and they're going to be so offended, and they probably won't talk to you. Go tell them. Because if you save their soul, there's a reward for you. Amen. And I wasn't going for the reward, but I just wanted to see their soul save. I know what I know what it's like to live in a backslidden slidden state. I know what it's like to play and sh show up on Sunday, play the part, and then change and then take off that mask and be a whole different person Monday through Saturday. Yeah. I have played that, and I I just warned that sister. I said, "Look, I, I've been there. I know what it's like. I know what this. I know how this movie ends, and it's not going to end good for yeah. you." And the example that I put, I said, look, if you're in a car with someone and they're looking on your phone and there's a car coming head on, do you not say anything? No, you warn them. There's a car coming, right? You Or you take that wheel, right? You, But at the end of the day, you warn them. When you're about to see a car wreck, you warn the person. Right, right. So that's I'm, true. I told him, I said, I'm, I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing a car wreck that's about to happen. And sure enough, she didn't have a true car wreck moment. But she got to the point where she realized, yeah, all those warnings served something, and now she's she's back. We had our com yeah, we we had our resolve and everything, forgive and forget. But she's on the right path, and I, and I'm thankful for that. But it was very tough, you know. It's not easy right. to bring up that conversation, you know, especially to a believer. It's it's, it's one thing oh, to, it's it's one thing to speak to the unbeliever and convince your and and and. and Tell them that God's ways are better, 
and that God wants to... Uh, it, it's not that God's keeping you away from fun or anything like that. God's just trying to protect you. Because 100%. just like you said, just like you mm-hmm. said, I was on a self-destructive path. That's all sin is. I mean, it's just it's just going to lead to self-destruction. And when you have that conversation with a believer, right, that's when it's like, man, you just, you know they're not going to respond well, because you know they're, you're, fi- you're talking not to them, you're talking to their flesh. You're yes. talking to the things that all of us, if we'd had no boundaries, if we had no divine laws to follow, bro, we would be right into the crowd. You know what I'm saying? But we're choosing daily to deny ourselves, deny this flesh, and follow Him, right? Mm-hmm. Jesus says, mm-hmm. only those who deny themselves, those are the ones, you know what I'm saying, who pick up right. their cross, and, and because, again, Ephesians, uh, I believe it's Ephesians says, all our passions have been nailed to the cross, and then yes. you got to be that same person to pick up that cross and mm-hmm. walk with it daily, Yes. Right? Boom. Revelation yes. right there. I just had just now. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> I love when I'm talking in the moment and then something just comes up, and that's the Holy Spirit. Praise God. I, I give glory to, to the Holy Spirit. But I love in that mo- uh, 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 when you choose to pick up your cross daily and follow Him, Yes, that's when you're deciding, that's when you're saying, yes, God, I choose to serve you today. And it is a battle. Right, just like you said, as, and and just since December twenty twenty, maybe life hasn't looked pretty. Maybe like maybe in some people's, hey, the world can easily say, hey, bro, your your life looks worse than it was. But they don't, they don't know, they don't know, right? To, to what the, to what they interpret good and bad means nothing. It's how it's at the end of the day. How is God seeing you? Mm-hmm. And I want to be approved by Him. I want to be a child of Him. I want to be used by Him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and, and I love that when you that you are now you're now no longer a slave to the devil, forced to work for him, forced to bring people out of their beliefs, out of of serving God. Now, now yes. you're a slave to Christ, and, yes. and you're going to do great and mighty works. This is, bro. You know, uh, it's uh, I'm 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 almost at a loss. Like I, I'm I'm. On the line, I'm on the fence of being at a loss for words and having too many words, if that makes any sense. No, that makes total sense. Like, I mean, it, it, if I never knew who Saul and Paul was in the in the Bible, but I've always admired Timothy when I was younger or when I was learning of who God was, but I never knew who Saul and Paul was. And then when they told me who Saul and Paul was, I was like, oh, my gosh, like th- this explains a lot. The burden, the hunger, why you're going to certain lengths to just make people or have people hear you. At work, you know, I meet the, the many, many different um, religions. Most of them is, you know, Christian and and the other half is, you know, Muslim and also a little bit of Catholicism. Now, now the very ironic thing of all of this is throughout these years and throughout my devotion and throughout my, you know, trying to adapt and change my life towards Christ. You know, like I said, it's it's a process. Um, you have these other believers sitting down with you, conversing with you, asking for guidance or asking for your perspective. In, in the real world, let's take modern day Jerusalem right now, you know, Israel. If you're sitting there and you're inviting different nations or different people who don't co align with each other or have hatred towards one another, you're never going to reach an agreement or you're never going to reach a certain perspective, right? It's always going to be coalition, it's always going to be conflict. Now, don't get me wrong. There has been conflict at work. Many, many people have said, you know, oh, he's there preaching false doctrine or he's there just being one of those Christian boys or, you know, all these things. And even even certain types of conflicts, even at work. And, you know, there was a man who came up to me, you know, he said, you know, you support Israel. I'm like, yes, I do. And, you know, he starts going, he starts telling me every word in the book. And I start telling him, like, I am speaking with love and you're speaking with hate towards me. I am calm and yet you're mad. And, you know, he, he silently walks away. And even atheist people at work, I'm speaking to many. I'm speaking to at least 8 to 12 people at work, you know, talking to them, guiding them, and, and giving them doctrine and giving them, you know, proof. And, and it's very ironic. Like like I said, you know, it's it's a hunger. It's a burden. It's um, It's something that's in you that you know. 
that if someone else does this, their life will be better. And it's not a forceful thing. It, it's a it's a talkative thing. It's it's a conversation. It's a relationship thing. And I have these people, you know, listening, and I have these people, you know, talking. And some of them even have changed a little bit of their perspectives. You know, whenever it was greatly a big impact or a small impact, it it still leads to the fruit. Seeing these people's lives change little by little, not knowing that they're following Christ is very remarkable to me because that's exactly how I felt when I was talking to my brother-in-law. Little by little, I started guiding myself and actually listening to what he was saying. And little by little, it happened. I wanted to see who God was. And it's, it's a very beautiful thing, brother. It's a very beautiful thing when you don't want to keep this a secret. You want to expose it. You want to share it. Yeah. You want to... If this helped me in my life at this age, like you said, the burden for the generation, my burden actually is part of that. It's for the next generation. These men, these young boys, these young kids, they need the next generation. And I believe in First Timothy 4.12, you know, don't don't despise thy youth. Teach them. Yeah. And, um, you know, after after NAYC, that's actually what I preached at my church, you know, uh, a little bit about that, my background and basically how the next generation needs God and how we should really equip them. And it just at work and just like in church and just like here I am, you know, I still want to give those words. I still want to give that belief. I still want to give that no matter what situation you're facing for, if it's hunger, if it's homelessness, if it's depression, if it's anger, if it's bitterness, if it's envy, whatever it is, just know he has a plan and a purpose for you. Because everything that you're going through, it like you said, there's two solutions. You either grow in Christ or you die in the world. That's it. You can look at this as a secular point of view or you can look at this in the spiritual point of view. It doesn't way. matter. It's the only way. You can, you can walk to an atheist and say, there's two ways in life. You either progress through it or you die staying stagnant. And they're not going to tell you that's fake because you're obviously speaking in their terms. Speaking in worldly terms rather than spiritual terms. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it like... <laughs> How can I say this? You know, I could ramble on and on about this, but it, it's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of understanding. If you're wanting to know who Christ is and if you're wanting to know who God is, you're going to have to open your mindset and be willing to hear. And you have to be willing to understand in order for you to see the heavenly kingdom, in order for you to be saved, in order for you to experience God and wanting to have that connection that relationship, you're going to have to go through seasons. You're going to have to go through seasons of possibly maybe doubt of separation, of sadness, of depression, or whatever the case may be. But it is to strengthen you. It is to help you. It is not to kill you, but it is to strengthen you. It is to guide you. And if I would have been able to realize that when I was younger, I really would have wondered how strong or how much of an impact would I have been in Christ for the kingdom? How would I have been guiding these other kids? How would I have been a part of these other kids? If, if I would have known what I've known in high school, would, the, would these kids still have fallen out? And I've reached to them, actually. I've tried reaching them. They they shut their doors in front of me. Actually, one, one of my clients, as, as a car detailer, she starts asking me, like, like, so you now really read the Bible? I'm like, yes, I'm in love with it. And she's like, you know, you remember back when you told me that, you know, God wasn't real. That really did hurt me. And I said, I'm sorry. Mm. And, you know, I am sorry that hurt you. I just didn't know what to believe at the time. And she's like, no, it's okay. You know, now you're living for God. So to hear that, a person from the past who knew me, to tell me, to see that change in that transition speaks volumes to me. It's, bro, it's your testimony. It, this is this is the reason why I created this this platform. It is your testimony. Not only to share your hidden testimonies, maybe things you don't share all the time, but it, it, it's the small things that people catch on. Bro, just like you mentioned, I remember when I get when I officially gave my life to Christ, and again, I had already been baptized before, I had received the gift of the Holy Ghost, I certainly did not have the, the Holy Ghost in me while I was living in the world, because the Bible says He can't dwell in a place no. of filth and sin. But praise God, he he refilled he he refilled me because that that cup is overflowing, ready to Amen. pour out His Spirit into people again. Even those who, even that one sheep that fell off the path, he's he, he left the ninety nine yeah. to go for the one, right? Yes. And he he refilled me. But it is your testimony. It is your testimony. People are picking up 
and 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 there are some people that are just waiting how long it lasts. You know what I'm saying? Because you 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 you're gonna get tested, right? But mm-hmm. but if 100%. you in, if you endure it, if you endure, it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna end with this, okay? If you endure being tested, not only by God, and you and you show yourself that you're you're really about serving God, that is going to convince people. There are going to be people in your circle from years back. They're going to look back at you and be like, man. I need to see what I need to see what he's about. Or when you reach out to them, maybe not in the moment, but years later, they're going to what they're going to say, "Wow, he's got a strong testimony." And I want to encourage you with one thing. You said something. Don't get caught up in the the what if I had done this mentality. Look, you are where you're at now cuz God ordained it. God allowed it all to happen. And all at the end of the day, you're going to use your sufferings so to bring him glory. Amen. And you're going to encourage a lot of people. And brother, Alan, I, I really appreciate you coming out again le- late on a Sunday, impromptu. <laughs> but, you know, we're here strengthening, strengthening each other with our testimonies, and you're obviously brave enough to share it, and I really appreciate it. And, uh, man, I just want to thank you. Thank you again for 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 showing up and I really believe that this episode sometimes we may not see the fruits immediately <laughs> but this is going to go into the atmosphere of Spotify and YouTube and it's going to it's going to find the people it needs to find and when it does they're going to be greatly encouraged man I, I just want you know uh, I appreciate you and uh, man if you have any final words that you want to say Yeah, I would actually. Um, To any believer, non-believer, to anyone going through a season, the one who goes through the season and embraces it and loves it and kindles it with fire is the one who will see the glory, is the one who will see the answers, prayers. Don't mistake your season for a mistake. Rather, look for the opportunity. Don't miss, don't, don't ever, ever waste a blessing. Don't, don't question your season. I promise that. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'm going to end it with this here. Uh, You know, I I just want to thank all my listeners here who have chosen to take their time to listen to this. I want to thank, obviously, Brother Allen for coming on here and sharing his incredible conversion from atheism to Christianity. I know there are people in my circle who need to hear this, and I know his testimony is going to serve powerfully in the kingdom. And so... I I end with this to all those who are listening or will listen to this podcast in the future. You know, if if you believe that you have a testimony that that glorifies God, you know, find me on Instagram, testimonios underscore escondidos. Let's connect on, on social media there because never underestimate the power of, of your testimony. It, if, if God's involved, it's big enough and worth sharing. So I thank you all for for listening. Uh, My name is Brother Mario. God bless.